Good morning. I'm Rene. I'm the founder of um, Internet Stores. We are a um, specialized uh, online retailer for bike and outdoor products. Um, and I'm happy to show you some development in, in our company also regarding the performance in terms of uh, EBITDA in the last uh, 12 months. Yeah, internet stores, we are in 10 uh, European countries. Um, in each country, we run one bike shop with bikes, um, accessories, clothing, and we run one outdoor shop, which also sells um, clothing, accessories, you, everything you need, the gear for um, activities like um, climbing, for example. Um, Internet Source has around 400 employees. We have offices in uh, Stuttgart, Germany, in Berlin, and uh, in Stockholm, Sweden. Um, this year, we are at around 140 million in revenues. Um, interesting uh, growth development uh, three years ago, we just had around 50 million. So on the one hand, um, gr very growing, uh, very strong growing business, but on the other hand, also um, with a high cross profit margin of around 40%. So we are clearly not selling just um, uh, due to the price. We are also um, delivering high quality, uh, huge assortment, um, high uh, performance in um, um, delivery speed, and some other uh, important KPIs I will show you later. Um, we carry all the relevant brands of around 750 at the moment. We have uh, 40,000 uh, products um, that we offer. Um, one important thing from our point of view is that we have all the products on stock. Um, we know from our um, customer analytics that the people take long time until uh, they have decided, but from the time they made their decision until they want to get the products, um, it has to be as short as possible, as you, uh, I'm sure you, you all know this. And therefore, we um, are able to send everything out that you order until 4 p.m. You maybe think that's not so special uh, these days, but um, you should have in mind that uh, bicycles has to be assembled by us. We have to assemble the, the, the gear, the, the brakes, um, the, the, the suspension, everything. And also the people are sometimes ordering up to 10 additional products like helmets or um, uh, other equipment they, they want to have. And um, therefore, it's really a uh, yeah, huge effort to make everything ready in just one or, or two hours. And um, as I said, we deliver 95 or we ship 95% of the parcels the same day. And um, depending on where you live, um, we have a high uh, ratio of, of, of people that get the products one day after. If you live in, in north of Sweden, then it could be one or maybe two days longer, but um, that's, that's, that's the approach. Um, this slide is a very interesting slide because it's showing our EBITDA development. Um, in the years, I would say, in the last five years, the strategy of the company was maximize the growth at a black zero in terms of EBITDA because we thought and also our investors thought that it's the high or the best strategy to drive the value of the company but at a certain point in time we clearly recognized that just grow uh, just growth without having EBITDA is nothing the investors would like uh, in the future and therefore we decided to keep an uh, interesting and significant level of growth but at the same time also um, having a strongly increasing EBITDA um, what are the main drivers for that? First of all, the cross profit. We think, and, and I also personally think, that it's really important to have a high cross profit. Um, e commerce companies with 20% cross profit or maybe less, from my point of view, it could be really difficult to um, achieve high, cross, uh, high EBITDA margins at a certain point in time. So, um, due to um, high share of own branded products, smart pricing, but also um, smart um, choice of, of countries where we are in, for example, high profitable countries like Switzerland or also Sweden, um, it is possible for us to generate 40% gross profit and at the same time um, be, ac be attractive for, for the customer. The second very important uh, thing for us is, is online marketing. 
Um, I will show you later a figure between, split between new customers and um, existing customers. Um, we are coming from around 15% in average acquisition cost for, for our uh, customers. But um, this year, for example, we achieved 10%. And it's really interesting uh, to know that we also have included big TV campaigns in that uh, figure. Um, so we are showing at the moment that it's possible for us to having um, big TV campaigns, or comparably big from for our company. It's not comparable with like other players you might know from the uh, textile business. But in our company, it's, it's a huge uh, thing we do and um, it's profitable. And clearly also efficiencies of scale. So um, our um, whole structure is, 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 is getting more efficient um, at the moment. So you see the development last year, three percentage points EBITDA, 3.4 million. This year, 10 million, um, 7%. Um, on the left graphic, you see the marketing cost ratio split by existing customers, new customers, and, um, uh, and the average. And um, f this is what we want to show with that graphic is that um, the profit, the profitability rise is not only coming um, due to increase of uh, existing customer and, and shut down more or less the new customer acquisition. That's absolutely not the case. We are acquiring uh, 600,000 new customers this year, but we do it in a yeah, Im improved way day by day. So we are really hard working on conversion rate for sure. Um, we are working on average order value. As soon as we have acquired the customers, we are also working very hard with a uh, huge CRM department on increasing customer lifetime value. So that's a very healthy development. We can show a decrease. Also last year would have been decreased, um, but this was the like starting year investment year for the TV. And this was just um, break even, but since this year we are clearly profitable with um, TV. And on the right graphic, you see um, our value per customer. It means um, the customer acquisition cost compared to um, the customer, uh, the GP2, uh, cross profit 2, that we generate um, in the customer, uh, with the customer after the initial purchase. So that's not uh, the initial uh, re revenue we are showing there. That's the customer lifetime value based on 24 months um, uh, in, in terms of cross profit. Um, so that's a very um, sustainable and healthy development from our point of view. Um, how we did this, um, it's based on a significant um, yeah, um, improvement in, in, in all CRM areas, um, for example, um, emailing, um, um, lifecycle campaigning, one-to-one um, -one communication, um, but also we tried some uh, print uh, uh, stuff like um, the f our first um, um, Megalog this year, which is a great combination from my point of view from an, a catalog and a magazine. And we clearly can, can prove that it was uh, highly profitable. Um, and also other activities are integrated um, like um, like on-site CRM, like one-to-one um, -one communication that we have with our customers based on um, knowledge, KPI knowledge that we have due to the data warehouse and um, other tracking systems. Um, what are the challenges for us in the future? Um, we are clear market leader in Germany, um, Switzerland, Austria, and in Sweden. Um, but still, we have just around you can say between one and two percentage points of the whole market. Clearly, uh, from the e-commerce market, we have maybe 10 to 15 percent. Um, but if you have a market that is so huge, and you, as a market leader, are just at one to two percent of the whole bike and outdoor industry, then you have to question yourself what could be the next driver. And from our point of view, we have to find solutions um, for the customers that our service, and this, this means pre-sale pre service and also after-sale service, is seen in the eyes of a customer comparable to stationary dealers. For example, you know the electronic bike is a huge trend. Um, in the stationary dealership, um, e-bikes are counting for around 20% of the revenue. For online retailers, it's one, maybe, maximum 5%. 
So it seems that the customers um, don't trust the online uh, dealers based on pre-sales, after-sales service, um, and therefore we have to find answers. Also, we have um, high um, difficulties to acquire some of the most important brands in the world. Um, that's really sad, um, and we have to um, find other ways, like we have um, established um, very successful own branded products, also own branded bikes, also bikes that are test winning at, at the moment. So it's a, it's a huge success, but still we are interested to also s sell the biggest uh, bikes in the world that decided not to deliver to e-commerce companies at the moment. And this also um, leads in, into the same direction. The question is, do we have to um, find cooperation models with stationary dealers? Do we have to um, own, own, uh, own stationary shops? Do we have to acquire stationary chains? That's um, the questions where we think about at the moment. I would have a lot of more slides and also a lot more to tell, but with an eye on the timeline, thank you very much. Have a good day.